Some diseases require more flexibility than cohort models can provide. Patient simulation models extend cohort models to provide additional flexibility to better represent complex disease progression. Specifically, patient simulation allows you to add patient characteristics, things like age, gender, ethnicity, and also patient history, things like adverse events, progressions, and infections. This specific patient level data can then impact any value in the model, such as probabilities, costs, and utilities. We have a problem in this model where the probability of death depends on the patient's gene type. So the model needs to know that patient characteristic. Also, the probability of recovery depends on how many times the patient has progressed. So the model requires patient history. We have demographic data describing the gene type in the patient population. This is loaded in a table. 70% of the population have gene type 1 and 30% of the population have gene type 2. The table gene type stores the demographic data in the model. A distribution is then used to assign a specific gene type to each patient from the demographic data. The distribution of the type that we use is a table and represents the appropriate table as we've just seen. When we open the distribution, you can see that the sampling rate is sample per trial and that will generate a new sample for each patient. When the model runs, each simulated patient will be assigned a gene type from the distribution. The distribution can then be referenced whenever the gene type impacts the patient within the model. In this problem, the patient characteristics of gene type impacts the probability of dying from the mild state. So let's examine the impact within the formula in the model. In the variable properties view, we see the variable p die mild is defined by our formula where the gene type is used as a condition within the if function to change the probability based on the patient characteristic. In this model, the number of times a patient has progressed from mild to severe impacts the probability of them recovering from the severe state. Therefore, we need to capture this patient history of progression using a tracker. Trackers can capture any type of patient history, including whether an event occurs, how many times it occurs, and or when it last occurred. At the progress event node, we create a tracker to count the number of times a patient progresses. We select the node, right click and choose define new tracker. Name the tracker T progress count, and note the initial value in there is going to be zero. Then define the tracker as t progress count plus 1. Each time a trial passes this node, the value of t progress will be increased by 1, generating a count of progressions. The tracker is now visible below the progress node. Now we can use the progression count to impact the probability of recovery. Again, go into the variable properties view, and the variable p recovery is defined by a formula which references the progression count tracker. In the choose function, we can see that when the tracker is 1, it's going to return the value of 0 0.1. When the tracker is 2, it will return the value of 0 0.05. And when the tracker t progress count is 3, p recovery will be 0 and no further recovery will be possible. Now that we've integrated patient characteristics and patient history into the model, we must run simulated patients through the model. Patient simulation, microsimulation, first assigns each patient the appropriate characteristic, then sends each one into the model. Note that at each chance node, a patient will only move to one branch, eventually taking a full pathway through the model, accumulating cost and utility along the way. The patient is more likely to move to a branch with a higher probability However, you must run as many possible patients through the simulation so that all possible pathways are represented. We select the decision node, choose analysis, Monte Carlo simulation, and then run 10,000 trials through the model. Each patient will pass through the model and accumulate total cost and effectiveness values. Individual patient results are then aggregated into mean values to provide the average cost and effectiveness per patient. 
With a micro simulation model, we still need to identify the optimal strategy, as with a cohort model. Once we have the patient simulation results, we can use the average values per patient to compare strategies through rankings and cost effectiveness on our graph. The rankings from a patient simulation are in an identical format to those from cohort analysis. We still get an ISA and NMB values to identify the most cost effective strategy. In a micro simulation model, we still want to see how patients flow through the model, as we would see through a Markov cohort report in a cohort model. In triage, the patient tracking reports show both individual patient and overall cohort flow. They provide total model transparency. Patient tracking is turned on in the tree preferences in the analysis settings. Then, when we run the analysis, we'll have access to new patient tracking reports to review. In the analysis output, we've now got access to patient tracking reports. So we can review a trial going through the standard of care and also going through the new strategy. So this shows an individual trial and their progression through the, in, the standard of care strategy. We can also then look at all of the individuals in, say, the standard of care rolled up into a cohort model. And this will pre represent the cohort flow for each strategy for a micro simulation model. The state probability graph shows an equivalent output as you'd get with a cohort model. 